Luke chapter 18, the book of Luke chapter 18. I'm excited and honored and overjoyed to be able to get in the Word of God for just a few minutes this morning. What an honor we have here today. Most people in the world have never been in a service like the, even this right here. Never, never. Now, I know that's hard for y'all to swallow, but it's a truth. Most people in the world have never one time been in a service like what we've already had here today. What a joy it is. Now, in Luke chapter 18, I want us to look at, and I'll read a little bit more scripture than normal because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach a very short message. And I, I'm struck when I read this chapter because it's just like one person after another is coming to the Lord for some kind of help. All of us in here this morning need some kind of help. All of us in here this morning need some, have something in our lives that we need to just come to Jesus with. Right. And, and look at this. Look at this, how many times it pops up. Let's, let's, uh, let's look here. Verse 1, 18. Now you've got to look at the Scripture here because I'm going I'm to read quite a bit here. He spake a parable to them uh, that men ought to always pray and not to faint, saying, verse 2, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And he's in New York City. Uh, 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 anyway, there's a lot of them nowadays. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, avenge me of mine adversary. This woman had been treated wrong. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said, well then, though I fear not God nor regard man, I'm a heathen, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And then he said, to hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect to cry unto him day and night, though he bear along with them? I tell you that he'll avenge them speedily. Now, stop right there. So this woman comes to him and she said, this judge, he won't give me what I want. And the judge said, if you'll hush, I'll, I'll give you whatever you want. She just continually come to him. That's a picture of us continually coming to the Lord when we have a need. Eventually, he'll, he'll, he said it. God will avenge them speedily. Now, let's see another one here. Uh, look at verse uh, 13. This has to do with salvation. And the publican, standing afar off, would not so lift, much lift up his eyes to heaven, but smote his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He came to the Lord with his sins, and he went down to his house justified. Now look at verse 15. And they brought unto him also infants, like little bitty babies. And you know, people say, you bring a little bitty baby to church? Absolutely. We got, we got some little bitty babies here this morning. I think they should go to church. The germiest place you can take a kid is a doctor's office. And, uh, and, and you, you pray over them and bring them to church. It'll be all right. I mean, we got a bunch of little babies in here. Old Chunk, he ain't that little. He, I thought he was little. Uh, we, Mapleine come over there uh, uh, the other night. Where's she at, Bradley? Where, Maple, look at that. Man, that's a big in there, ain't it? Uh, uh, but uh, you know what? Bring, they came to Jesus, and they brought these infants to Jesus. And somebody said, get them kids out of here. They cry. They, they spit up on the seats. And they smell bad, and they man, and somebody should have said that's the way y'all are to the Lord. Uh, them Pharisaical adults stink in the sight of God, and and you know what the Lord said? Look here, what He said. And we'll talk about this tonight. You be sure and be here tonight. Verily I say unto you, whoever uh, suffer the little children, sixteen, to come unto me and forbid them not. So it's good to bring your kids to the Lord. Now look here at. Um, Verse number 18, and a certain ruler. Here's a rich man who's a young man, and he said, good master. He come to him. He didn't go to the Pharisees, didn't go to the scribes. He came to Jesus. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? And the Lord follows out that conversation that you're familiar with. Then look at verse 35. Here's a man with health problems, and he comes to the Lord. And it came to pass that he's come now to Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging, and the multitude passed by. He asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passes by. And he cried saying, Paul, no. John, no. Matthew, no. Jesus. 
Son of uh, David, have mercy on me. So you got a rich man needs to come to the Lord. A little kid needs to come to the Lord. A blind man needs to come to the Lord. And uh, on and on and on. Verse, and verse 38, he cried saying, have mercy on me. And so over and over and over in this chapter, we see people that come to Jesus. Now I want to use that thought this morning, preach just a few minutes on the subject, like the song they sing, bring it all to him. Now my message to you this morning is, bring it all to him. Whatever's got you messed up this morning, whatever you're fighting with, whatever your problem is, I'm telling you, if you're mad at somebody, if you're hurt, if you have physical ailments, if you got a lot of money and don't know what to do with it, if you got like this guy here, if you're a widow that's been taken advantage of by a crooked, crooked boss or neighbor or whoever, wrong, then you bring that problem to the Lord. Now, you hear me say that, and yet many of you will sit here this morning and say, well, he just don't know what I'm going through. and not I. It don't matter. It don't matter. I just read you a chapter where people with all kinds of needs got and they said, I'm going to Jesus with this. I'm going. You know, we have out there on our sign that has witnessed to literally hundreds of thousands of people, Jesus is the answer to all your problems. We got another one up there. That sign ministry has grown now. I can't even tell y'all how many states they're in, how many millions and millions of people uh, see in the sign that sprang from our sign right there all over the, the parts of the United States. You wouldn't believe it. wouldn't believe it. And, you know, people need to know that. They need to know that. I didn't say he had the answer. I said he is the answer. Amen. So whatever your problem is this morning, as you read the Gospels, at times you can see people come to Jesus, bringing all kinds of them. Everyone that was sincere and willing to listen and obey got help. Every one of them. Every person who ever come to Jesus Christ sincerely and willing to listen to him and obey him, he helped them. Never, never will you find a place in the Bible where the Lord said, nope, sorry, you've done too much wrong. Sorry, I don't like your attitude. Sorry, I don't like... Every, if a person comes sincerely and willing. And I'm glad I can say that to this whole crowd this morning. Anybody in here, if you will sincerely come to the Lord with a willing heart and say, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever, change whatever. Lord, will you help me? God promised He'll help you this morning. Bring it all to Him. I want to talk about your burdens. Bring your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. This widow had a burden and she came uh, to the judge, and she said, uh, will you help me? And the judge said, get out of here, woman. I, uh, you ain't got enough money to pay me. Uh, yeah. She came back the next day. Will you please help me? He said, I told you, get out of here. Secretary, don't let her in here no more. And the next day, she come through, the, will you help me? And the Bible said that wicked judge who did not fear God and did not fear him. He didn't care about nothing or nobody. He said, her continual coming wearieth me. And the Lord said, did you hear what that unjust judge saith? And he said, and shall not God avenge you? Look, y'all, she was a total stranger. Now, every one of us who have kids know that concept. You know, your kid asks you for something. No, no, you ain't get it. Then they ask you again. No, you ain't get it. And then they ask you again. No. And but, but boy, then when they get really sincere and they clean up their room and they do all kind of stuff and they say, I'll be good. I'll be good. Uh, you know, I, you start breaking down, don't you? I, I do. I do. And I don't think it's about, I mean, and you'll finally just say, look, I'm going to go ahead and give that to you. Uh, I got one sitting right over there this morning. I won't name no names. Uh, not the oldest one, but the next to the oldest one. And uh, uh, she, she used to do that to me, buddy. She knew how to con me. Uh, and uh, uh, I'd come home, and she'd, if she wanted to do something, she'd have the floor swept. She'd go, wow, wow, what's uh, uh you know, and have her room cleaned up and everything. And I didn't even tell her. And, and then it would come. I was wondering if I could go, you know. <laughs> you know and, uh, you know, that's, that's right. That's what, it, listen, you ain't going to get nothing out of your parents saying, you don't never let me do nothing. You, know, you ain't never going to do nothing with that kind of attitude. Right? Let me give you some advice, kids. Humble yourself down. Come down, come down on your knee. Say, You sure are a wonderful mother. And I thought, 
And, and me, you might get somewhere like that. And that's why she came. And that's why we come to the Lord. We don't, you don't come to the Lord saying, well, I don't think you've done me right. People don't, you ain't going to get nothing like that. You come to the Lord saying, look, I'm a sinner. I know I deserve being be in hell. But I need help, Lord. I need help. Bring your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Hallelujah. I like them old songs that said, that verse that says, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Do you do that? Or you, you bring, some of y'all break your problems in here this morning and you'll take them back out the door with you. The Bible said, casting all your care upon Him. One of the greatest things about being saved is uh, not just that we miss hell and get to go to heaven, that we can bring our burdens to Him today. He's here today. And you can bring your burden to the Lord and leave it there. And the song we used to sing, bring every burden. Um, we, we talked to, uh, we went on visitation, me, Brother Mike, Bond, and Frankie. And uh, we split up and knocked on doors in apartments over yonder and, and uh, or trailer park up here. And I, I knocked on a door. Lady had the gate locked. For, you know, so I figured that was to keep the dog from getting out. So I reached over and unlocked the gate. And we walked up the handicap ramp and knocked on the door of an old uh, pretty run-down trailer. And, uh, and it's sad. And she said, come in. She was sitting in there. Hard, couldn't hardly get up. 80 I believe 81 years old. And I said, ma'am, I'm a preacher. I said, I'm Danny Castle. I'm from Shining Light Baptist Church. She said, well, come on in. Well, come on in and sit with me. And, you know, she talked to us. And we sat there and talked to her. And I, and she, and me and Frankie sat there and talked to her for a little while. And she had this little old dog. And he was in a, in a, a little, one of them little furry looking things. They put dogs in around. That was his bed. And, and he laid there. And he jumped up and come over and smelled us and then went right around and laid back down. And uh, she, she, said, uh, she said, I don't ever have nobody to talk to. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Was it you with me, Brother Mike, or Frankie? I just Frankie before we split up. And he said, uh, and she said, thank you for coming. I said, ma'am, the Lord loves you. She said, I know. She said, I don't have nobody to talk to. I just talked to him. And he's deaf. She said, my dog's deaf. Talk to a deaf dog. Go. Talking to a dog you can hear. I mean, talking to a dog. And uh, they, they, and uh, she said, I don't have nobody to talk to but my little dog. That was her only companion. That was her only friend. And you know, I thought, you know what, ma'am? Bring your burden to the Lord and leave it there. She told me, she said, they're going to make me move. I'm going to have to find another place to live. My grandkids come and help me sometime. And I thought, dear lady, dear lady, dear lady, bring your burden to Jesus. Bring your burden to Jesus. I don't know the answer to her. She has no way. She can't get out and drive a car. She can't, she can't, I don't even know. She probably don't even have a phone or even how to use one. I don't know. But I'm telling you people, when you have burdens, you bring it to the Lord. Bring it to the Lord. And I prayed with her. I prayed with that dear lady. And if you, some of you ladies would like to go see her, that'd be a great investment of your time. I'm telling you, just a mile from here. And you know what? She, she said, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming by to see me. I didn't know her. I don't remember her name right now. Uh, Mick, Mickey, I think, or nickname was Mickey or something like that. But uh, anyway, there was another one, 90 years old, that we talked to in the apartments over there. 90 years old. 90. And the same thing with her. Grew up over young Bryson City. Uh, wound up down here, a widow. Uh, there's always, there's more old widow widows than widowers. I mean, you go in a rest home, it's about 80% women and 20% men. That'll tell you something. They killed them. And uh, uh, they, they, uh, they, <laughs> true, there's always more old women than there are old men. And uh, they, uh, they, they took all they could take and kicked out. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, they, bring your burden to the Lord, y'all. Let me say secondly this morning, bring your battles to the Lord. Bring your battles to the Lord. Uh, the Bible said these people were having battles. Here's a man struggling. Are you struggling this morning with doubt in your salvation? Are you struggling? Say, Brother Danny, sometimes I don't even know if I'm saved or not. I don't know if I prayed the right prayer. I, I remember that night. I, they told me I got saved. I don't know if I did or not. I don't know. I tell you how to fix that. Bring it to Jesus. Bring it all to Him. Bring it all to Him. You get down on your knees and you say, Lord, 
I cannot do nothing to save myself. I cannot feel a certain way. I can't think a certain way. I can't change what I've done wrong. But I tell you right now, I'm dependent on you, Jesus. I'm dependent on you and you only. When it comes right down to it and we got to die, that's all we got to depend on is Him. Bring it all to Him. Bring it all to Him. If you doubt your salvation, there's probably 50 in here that do, you bring it to Him. So lay down in your bed at night and say, Lord, I don't know it's half the time whether I'm coming or going, but Lord, I'm bringing it to you. Jesus, will you help me? Jesus, will you help me? And he, he said, him that cometh to me, I will what? No wise. That means under no circumstances will I cast you out. That's a blessing. Bring it to him this morning. Bring it to him. Bring it all to him. Trust the Lord. Now, I, I, I read an article. I heard a preacher talking about it, actually about uh, the famous actor Robin Williams. And most of y'all remember Robin Williams, I think it's been, I don't know, eight, nine, ten years when, when he finally committed suicide. And Robin Williams was a very, very talented actor. I never, I don't, I never watched one of his movies. I heard about Miss Doubtfire and Mort Mindy in this article that I read, but I, I don't care about stuff like that. And, uh, but they, I know one thing, I heard him stand up and talk about tremendous talent, absolute tremendous mind, wit, comedian. As far as the flesh is concerned, I'm not giving him any credit except where he had a natural talent. He really did. And uh, they said not long, not long before Robin Williams died, he, he was talking. Somebody had a conversation with him. And he said, I don't even know what, it, what is it. He said, I got money. I got fame. I got anything I want. I can buy anything I want. I can go anywhere. But he said, it's empty. What's the purpose of life? He said, is there a God? And he said, if there's a God, why don't he talk to me? And this person talking to him, I don't know what they told him. They have, them people have psychiatrists and they have counselors and they have rehab and they pay. Them people out there, you know why there's more psychiatrists in Hollywood than there are anywhere else in the United States? Because that's where the money is. I mean, you can get rich out there being a psychiatrist. And all you got to do is let them talk for 30 minutes and say, well, this is called you somebody dropped on your head when you was five years old and you didn't get that electric train for Christmas and messed you up or something like that. And that's all you got to do. You can get rich. And it's the easiest job in the world. But you know what? He said, I don't know the meaning of life. And oh, what it have been, could have been different. They found him that morning uh, with a belt around his neck between a, and a chair in a closet where he took his own life and he had everything. You know what that? It would have been great if somebody could have sat down with a Bible and told Robin Williams, Bring it to him, uh, Mr. William. Bring it to him. And the Lord would have saved that old boy. And he could have been a witness for God. You know what he didn't do? He didn't bring it to Jesus. That's what you got to do. You got a problem with drugs? Anybody in here got a problem with drugs? Alcohol? Has it got its grips on you? You think you can't quit? I can't quit? You'd be surprised at the people that think, I can't. I can't. I've had people tell me that. Brother Danny, I've tried over and over and over and I can't can't. I can't. I'm an addict. That one girl told me that long ago. I'm an addict. I'll always be an addict. I don't believe that. I don't believe you have to always be an addict. I don't believe you have to always be an alcoholic. I don't believe there, I don't believe if you get right with the Lord you're not a recovering alcoholic. You're a former alcoholic. You are a former drug addict. The Lord can help you. You bring it to Jesus. You bring it to Jesus. I've seen people get out of that sea bring that thing to the Lord sincerely now sincerely and willing to obey and the Lord, you watch the Lord do a work in your life. Bring it to Him. You say, Brother Danny, I'm battling drugs. I don't know what I'm going to do. Our flesh has an addictive nature. Uh, preacher, I don't know how I'm going to quit. I'll tell you how. Bring it all to Him. Bring it all to Him. You can't do it on your own strength. You ain't strong enough. You got a, you got a problem with sin, lust, pornography, something like that. You say, well, I'm addicted to it, preacher, and I can't quit. That's not true. That's not true. Uh, you can quit. Throw your phone away, you'll quit. Quit turning your TV on, you quit. Yeah, you can quit. People say, well, I just can't, I just can't quit, uh, I quit this drug. You get locked up in jail three or four days, you quit. You can quit. You just got to bring it to him. You got to bring it to him. Bring it to him. Bring it to him. I've heard people say, Brother Danny, I brought it to him, then I failed. And then I prayed about it and I fell. Well, that's the flesh. Our flesh has a fallen nature. It's natural for our flesh to pull us back and pull on it. And that's why sometimes you really, really repent. And then you say, I'm never going to do that again. And then in a few months, you find yourself 
slipping back into that same sin. That don't mean you're not saved, and that don't mean He didn't forgive you. That means this old flesh continually battles and continually battles and continually battles, and it's a fight to the finish, brother. It's every day. You battle with this stuff, you battle with this stuff, guarantee it. There's a hundred people probably here this morning that you battle with looking at things on your phone that you can't, you say, I know this ain't right, but I, I like it. I get pleasure out of this. I enjoy this. i tell you what you can do. You bring it to Jesus this morning. You bring it to the Lord. And you say, Lord, by your grace and by your help and by your power, I'm claiming the victory over this today and then walk in the light as he's in the light and Jesus Christ will help you and deliver. Listen, people. If he can forgive your sins, if he can float up in the sky, if he can come back in the sky and take us out of here, he can help you get over your addiction to pornography. Say amen. That's right, brother. If you don't, he'll pay for it. And number three, I'll be through. Bring it all to him in your brokenness. A loss of marriage or your marriage problems. You know, marriage, being in a bad marriage can be a very, very hopeless feeling and a situation you feel like I'm doomed I'll never get out of this God I'll just tough it out to the end if you'll give me grace God I don't know how I'm going to make it out or maybe maybe you're in a separation or just going through or have gone through a divorce and you think Lord I'm broken you talk about broken that'll get you broken brother that'll get you broken all seems hopeless and you think it's never going to change. Now, a couple things right quick. This is not a message on marriage, but I will say this. If anybody in here is fussing and fighting as husband and wife, and you think we're just barely even staying together, preacher, don't honestly get, be honest about it, preacher. The only reason we're together here today is because we know it's the right thing to do, and we're just hanging on, hoping the Lord, might be, hey, it's probably hopeless, it'll be like this forever. If that's your situation here this morning, I'm telling you two things. Number one, if both, Husband and wife, if both of them will sincerely hit this altar and say, Lord, I'm willing to do what you said in the Bible. It won't be heaven on earth, but it'll fix and help your marriage problem. If a husband will love his wife like Christ loved the church and the wife will obey and submit to that husband, you can make your marriage work. I'm saying that on the authority of the Word of God Almighty. I didn't say be perfect. I didn't say you wouldn't have disagreement. I'm saying you can make it work if both. If the wife will say, you're right, I've been a grouch and I've been a smart aleck and I bite your head off and I'm fussy and hard to get along with. He said, honey, I love you and I've been hateful and I've been selfish and I'm going to try to do better. If both of y'all, if both of them will try to do what God said, you can make it. Now, if one of them won't, all you can do as the one that will is say, God, give me grace and help me to be the very best I can be in this situation and this circumstance, and the Lord will help you. And He'll give you extra grace and extra blessings for trying to save a marriage by yourself. Bring it to Him. Bring it to Him. What about a loss of help? You say, Brother Danny, I've been healthy all my life. And now look what, look what happened. Listen, that could happen to any of us. Right now, right now, I could have cancer in my body. And I might. Right now, I could have a valve in my heart blocked. And I might. I don't know. I don't feel like it. But that's why they call heart attacks a silent killer. You don't even know you've got it. Bam. You fall over and you're gone. And, and, and people with cancer. We have people in our church battling with cancer. I think of Miss Lisa. Oh, Lordy mercy. What a battle she's fought. And I admire her so much for hanging in there and staying in church and bringing her grandkids to church and them girls and, and just fighting and, and, and keeping a good attitude. You, you remember me talking about Bo and, and others uh, in our church, uh, Sandy, Brother Derek, uh, others that have fought that battle with cancer. And you think, Lord, in mercy, uh, why did God let me get cancer? I've tried to live right. Why did God let No, 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 no. That's the wrong attitude. Bring it to Him. Bring it to Him. Bring it to Him. Say, Lord, I don't understand 
I don't, I can't figure out why this is happening, but I know I'm in your hands and I know I belong to you. I'm bringing it to you. I'm laying it at your feet. Your will be done. If it's your will for me to have to go like this, I'll accept it. I sure would like to be healed. But if you don't, by your grace, I'm going to trust you anyway. Bring it to him. Bring it, bring it to him. Bring it to him. Bring it to him. I remember Brother Wayne. How Brother Wayne fought that battle. And he finally succumbed to it. And we're all going to anyway, eventually. I mean, something's going to get you. I remember um, uh, my friend, Brother Hensley, pastor of King James Baptist Church in York, South Carolina. A brilliant man. Uh, you're talking about a Bible scholar, if there is such a thing. He's one of them. He knows that Bible backward and forward. Lost his wife about a year. I'm guessing it might be two years now. And his, his eyesight kept getting worse. He is now considered legally blind. He goes to the pulpit with a stick like this. He makes his announcement. He gets his, he got his scripture memorized. And he preaches every Sunday. You know what that guy done? He took his problems to Jesus. He didn't run around and say, well, Lord, I've, I've preached 40 years. And now, look, you know, my wife's dead. My sight's gone. I might as well just sit down and give up. No, he takes it to the Lord. Take it to the Lord. Now, the secret is keep bringing it to the Lord. You got stomach problems, acid reflux, headaches, back problem. You just keep bringing it to the Lord. Bring, every problem they had, they brought it to Jesus and said, Lord, if you got some kind of reason, are you trying to talk to me? I'm willing to listen. If not, help me to just suffer it out. Help me to do what I'm supposed to do. I don't care what your problem is. Bring it all to him this morning. Amen? Fanny Crosby. They said, I think after she was a few weeks old, a doctor put the wrong medicine or something like that in one of her eyes, or in her eyes, and, and she's blind her whole life. And Fanny Crosby could have got bitter. She could have said, if there is a God, why did that's what people do nowadays. I heard somebody on YouTube, somebody sent me something. Oh, there's this, this brat, about 35 years old uh, girl. She said, uh, look, if you could even prove that God's real, I wouldn't believe in him for be, being so mean. Now that little nut is going to find out the hard way. God ain't mean. Oh, that mean God of the Old Testament was a murderer and a, he committed genocide. Well, anybody that crazy, uh, they, they ain't much hope for unless God opens their eyes. You ain't, you ain't going to talk to a person like that. God ain't mean. God's not ugly. God's not mean to people. God don't. Listen, y'all. God's good. That's the goodness of God that all of us ain't hell this morning. Amen. Look, y'all. If, if the loss of your health, don't Fanny Crosby grew up and wrote some of the greatest songs in the history of the Christian church. And you know what she said? Somebody said, I feel sorry for you, something like that. And she said, don't feel sorry for me. I missed all this junk y'all got to look at in this world. First thing I ever see will be Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's a different way to look at it, ain't it? Can you imagine that? She might not have been as bad off as we thought she was. One preacher told me the other day, we were talking about Brother Hensley losing his sight. He said, well, honestly, he, he's probably better off than we are. You don't have to see all the junk in the world and all the temptations and the wickedness out there. I mean, whatever, whatever your need is, bring it to him. Come on, girls, get ready. John's disciples went to the Lord one time. And they came to the Lord and they said, John wants us to See if you're really him. And he basically said, yeah, I'm him. They come to Jesus. When Lazarus died, the loss of a loved one, Mary and Martha, they didn't get mad and say, Jesus, God should have never let this happen. They came to the Lord and said, our brother has passed away. When you lose a loved one, the thing for you to do is bring it to Jesus. There ain't no doubt in my mind there's a lot of people in here this morning. She's playing softly. There's a lot of people in here this morning. Say, Brother Danny, I need to just take... Nobody don't even know what I'm going through, preacher. I've not even told nobody. But I got a burden. And I need to bring it to him this morning. Let's stand. We'll do that right now while they sing. Amen.
Amen. Come on. Let's bring it to Him this morning. That's right. That's right. Come on. Amen. 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 Come on, teenagers, girls, boys. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Just bring it all to Him. Bring it all to Him. Woo! Glory. Glory. Bring it all to Him, sir. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Thank I just bring it all to Him. Bring it all to Him. Bring it all to Him. Looking for an answer. God always, God has, a always has a plan. Bring it all to and Him. When the burdens get yeah. so heavy help me, Lord. Help me, and your side is getting dim, oh, it sure is good to know I can bring I can it all bring to Him. Bring it all to Him. Can you bring it all to Him this morning? Come on this morning. Come on right now. In the throne Amen. room of my Savior, I find a sweet relief. Bring it all to him today. I find strength Mom to bear daddy, my burden. Wives, I find comfort teenagers, for my Bring it all to him. Bring it all to him. My cup is overflowing. But Lord, I can't do this. I can't fix this. But Lord, you can. it to the rim. Blood of blessing, consolation. Lord of God. When I bring it all to Him, so I'll just bring it all to Him. When no one understands, when you're looking for an answer, God always has a plan. And when the burdens get so heavy, and your side is getting dim, oh, it sure is good to know I can bring it all to Him. Amen. In the throne room of my Savior, I find a sweet relief. I find strength to bear my burdens, and I find comfort for my grief. And when my cup is overflowing, and he fills it to the rim, what a blessed consolation. I can bring it all to him, so I'll just bring it all to him. When no one understands, when you're looking for an answer, God always has a plan. And when the burdens get so heavy, and your side is getting dim, what a blessed consolation. When you bring it all to Him. Bring it all to Him this morning. Bring it all to Him. Now, while he's praying now tonight, I've got a very, very important, special message for tonight. It's for everybody. God might use the message tonight to help some of our families stay out of hell. Be here tonight, 6 o'clock. Bring somebody with you. Tomorrow night, we'll work 5.30 men. Ladies, too, if you want to. Tuesday evening, 5.30, church cookout. Back here. Volleyball. Basketball. Uh, I'm sure you know to tell your kids to dress appropriately. It is a church. And so don't forget that. It's Tuesday evening, 5 30. Okay? All right. Amen. All hearts clear? Amen. Feel like I've been in church this morning. How about you? Yes, sir. Good Sunday school hour. Good service this morning. Good spirit in here. Thank you for being here. Now, look, uh, be careful getting out of here. Uh, if you didn't get signed up for camp a while ago, get on the list. We're making our plans. If you're going to youth camp, get on this list. And uh, and and about helping kids, let me know who all, what, and when, how much. So we'll do that. Okay? Official camp season. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for the good reports Miss Pletcher's had lately. What a blessing.
That's a blessing. God's good to us. All right. Let's bow our head. We'll be dismissed. Prayer. Be, be careful getting in out of here. And take your time. Don't run over nobody. And the Lord bless you for it. Okay? But Jeff dismisses.